Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Jordan, as I said, and tonight I have the opportunity of sharing with you all a very interesting topic. Well, I find it interesting, and the topic of conversation is ultrasonic levitation. So let's see what we got on the agenda here. About me, problem solution, levitation, material list, the build, setup, tuning, levitation in action, fail, and success. And Okay, so a little about me. I'm 23 years old from Broward County. Uh, I'm a solar technician at Solar Security. One of my hobbies, uh, I'm a songwriter, musician, and producer. Uh, you'll see why I said that later on. Okay. So, uh, microchips. They're a very intelligent device. There's over a billion transistors in these little micro-sized chips. According to uh, Moore's Law, that is supposed to double every two years. So, it's a pretty amazing thing. Um, every super chip has its kryptonite. The problem is, microchips are very fragile and easily damaged by static electricity. Now, how do you solve the, that, that issue? The solution is, when handling these devices during production, uh, you gotta isolate the chips from all surfaces that will induce those static charges on the device. Um, and this can be achieved by levitation. By definition, levitation is the process by which an object is held aloft without mechanical support in a stable position. So there's many types of levitation. There's magnetic, uh, which is uh, what Evan did, manipulation of the magnetic field, aerodynamic manipulation of air, and acoustic or ultrasonic, and like I said, I'm a musician, so I wanted to do something relative to sound. So in order to make this thing happen, uh, I needed some specific materials. I needed a high power speaker able to give me an ultrasonic output. And I was able to find one online. Uh, chose this 70 watt speaker because it was simple and cost effective. Uh, it was actually taken out of a, an ultrasonic cleaner. So I said, hey, let me try this. Uh, sine wave <coughs> generator. Now I had a speaker, I just needed an input. And I needed to get a sine wave generator that would give me clean AC, uh, clean sine wave um, at an ultrasonic frequency at about 20 to 30 kilohertz with a 1 to 5 volt amplitude. And I was able to build this with uh, the circuit with some capacitors, resistors, and a couple other electrical components. Next, I would need to amplify that signal. Uh, since my speaker operated at 120 volts AC, I, I needed to step up that 12 volt AC uh, signal that was coming from my uh, signal generator. And uh, I was able to do that with some transformers. As you can see here, uh, I got three transformers in parallel, and uh, each one is about 20 watts, 30 watts, and the sum of them will give, give me a good enough amount of power to uh, power the speaker. So other bits and pieces, I needed a stand, I needed a reflector, and I needed something to levitate, and that was these phone calls. Now I got everything I needed, it was time to build and put it together, right? So this was one of the more fun parts. I, I got to put together this circuit uh, into a little electronics box. I don't have it here. It was a huge fail. Uh, after I tested it, um, I ended up blowing out one of my transistors. <laughs> so I, I have a pretty huge box here uh, I can show you later. Um, this, this device actually has an adjustment dial on there, so I'm able to adjust the frequency range of my device, of my uh, signal generator. I thought I had it all together. When I hooked up everything, this, it just did not work. This was very frustrating for me. Uh, so I did some, some research. Uh, I sat with Oleg for hours and 
making sure I was getting the right output out of my signal generator. And uh, I was. So I couldn't figure out why this thing wasn't working. I reached out to uh, somebody from a website called Sonic Levitation, and this, this guy he told me that the issue was my, uh, my transformer. See, I used an iron core transformer, which only operates at 60 hertz. And I was able to get a, what's called a ferrite core transformer, which could handle that ultrasonic frequency. And that was one of my complications. So I'm going to show you a video of my project in action. Hopefully it works this time. advances we will be able to achieve levitation of cars or a scooter. So how it works, um, right here we have the electronics box um, sending an electrical signal to my speaker. My speaker is producing a sine wave which is this blue line and it is once it, it hits this reflector it sends a similar uh, shape sine wave back to the uh, transducer and these points right here where the two those two similar waves uh, cross is called a node and if I was to draw a line at every one of those points I would have what's called a standing wave anything you put on that standing wave as long as it's light enough will be able to flow be able to levitate now uh, ultrasound is used every everywhere. Um, some other places in, is in sonography, looking through people's body. Um, you're actually able to detect people's gender um, before they're born. Um, it's also used to look at tumors. Um, people who have Crohn's disease, you're actually able to look inside. Um, sonic weaponry, um, some police departments actually have um, sonic weapons now and um, in big uh, mm, outbreaks where a lot of people are um, going crazy they bring these things out and they spray them on the on their targets and it actually disorients them and it has the ability to pop your eardrums you'll see blood running from your ears it's that powerful so in chemistry um, you want to have um, you'll have two different uh, liquids and um, basically what you do is uh, by using the sonic waves, you're able to make a chemical reaction without any uh, other surfaces actually touching. Looking ahead, um, because of my issues that I had with my, my transformers, um, I didn't really get to do what I had looked out to. I seen a, oops, I seen a, a video online of um, actually four uh, transducers and they were actually able to 3D manipulate different uh, particles um, and I said man that should be so fun I can do that so um, I even got the micro controller and everything I was ready to program this thing and get it going but because of the time constraints I was not able to um, but for future study I do plan to do some independent study and really try and get this thing going for pleasure. Any questions? Uh, when you had success with your focus on levitation of the balls, did you ever like introduce a solar object in there to see if you experience some type of interference? Yeah, for sure. 
Um, I've seen this process done several times and they actually have um, multiple balls revealing the standing wave. Now, as I was trying to do this, accomplish this, I used a set of tweezers and I was slowly putting one in at a time. And as I would move my hand over the speaker, whatever was already floating would just fall because I'd break the, the waves. Well, I'd like to thank my teachers, my fellow classmates, uh, my mother. Uh, she really helped me get ready for this presentation. It's not easy coming in front of all you beautiful people. <laughs> thank you.